All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, happy Easter. Um, my name is Johnny. Um, for those that don't know me, I, I went through the program about nine years ago. Um, the Lord rescued me, saved me, slowed me down, put me in a place. Now I can um, do my very best to try to be a light to other people. Um, you know, I've battled a, battled a lot, but, you know, one thing about it is it's truly amazing to, to see from one, one end here over here. We know where you very start, and I'm never finished, but to be trusted by the Lord to come up and give a word. It's, it's truly a, you know, a, it's a humbling thing, but it comes with a lot of um, responsibility. And um, um, grat- you know, gratefulness and thankfulness for what he's done in my life. Um, but also to be trusted by him is a, is a very um, is a very thing that I take joy in Amen. is because you know, you know, nobody could trust me before, but now the King of Kings can trust me. It's a uh, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a transformation that happens, and that's what we're going to talk today. I know it's Easter, and I, I might talk about my life just a little bit, but you know, it, it, a lot of times we we come in somewhere. One thing is constant in our life. One thing is constant. Actually, two things, but. is things are going to change. It's constant. Th- th- things are going to be changing around you, in you, Amen. whatever. It's, it's Something's going to change yeah. for the bad or for the good. Something's constantly changing. That's right. But the other thing that's constant is God never changes. Amen. So it's kind, of, it's kind of one of those things. And, you know, when we go into, we can, we can go to 2 Corinthians 517 and um it's just it's one of those um scriptures i don't think we 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 take to heart because a lot of us in here but a lot of us out here too i know a lot of you i really do i I mean i know a lot of you and we battle things and um um but when it says Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creation altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, a fresh new has come. Amen. 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 And everybody says amen. amen. But we talk about our past and live in our past. Amen. See, it's not about sometimes. I have a you know a, a you know a, it's not a saying, but it's sometimes it's not how we start, it's how we finish. Amen. Okay, guys, Amen. you know you 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 come in here. You know, years ago I came in here not knowing nothing about the Lord. So, but then I look at other people and I then I say, hey, I want what they got, but I don't know how to get it. When it's just as simple as. Jesus help. I mean, some of the things are, is just amazing, but we but we look at and, and, we, and we say the scripture, but we're still relying on our old ways. When something comes in your life, what do you tend to do? You fall back to that nature that you already know. But what is your new nature? Is it engrafted in Christ or is it relying on self to get you out of the circumstance that's actually grooming you and, 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 and molding you into the person you are and not knowing and not having the right perspective in your circumstance. Just because you, you think you want out of it so bad just because it hurts you. And you want someone else to save you from it or you get out of it. But then you want to get on your knees and pray to God, why are you taking it? Well, I'm taking you through this so you can grow. And you're asking me to transform me into you, to himself, but you, you won't even go through this little task. 
because you want to run away from it, but think everything's okay. Because you can, you can make yourself get, go through it, but you're still relying on your old nature to get you through it. But we can put a wall over any, a lot of people. We've done it for years. But see, when it comes to the, the fact that I am a new creation, I'm engrafted in Christ. You're engrafted in Christ. You're in Him. But see, it's like even the old things. And what are the old things? Old things has come. Old, you know, the old things have passed away, yet everything has come. It's here right now. It's tangible. Amen. But you, you want to, me too. I'm not, I'm not just sitting up here talking to you. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not just sitting here talking to you. I'm talking to me too. like I look at my family, I look at all these things, I look at the old, see, I, I'm, I'm from Sandpoint, I got a lot of friends, oh, not even really friends anymore, I got a lot of acquaintances, I got a lot of family, I'm not saying you have to give up your family when I say this, I'm just saying, you know, the things from the past that, that hinder you in the Lord today, that doesn't mean you have to lay them down, stop praying for them, not go see people. I'm not saying that. But if it's hindering your relationship with the Lord, you, you, you might want to lay it down. Amen. Because where that leads is I don't know. But I do know it, it might lead you down a road that will cause you to stumble. It, it does in my life. And thank God that I had wise counsel in my life to hold me put or I would be right back in here. Because in the beginning of my walk, I, I thought that I had it together. But I didn't, I didn't run. I, see, I was still an intern. <laughs> I was still a staff member at the Spokane Dream Center. But I was trying to rely on my old self to try to get me to a place where I could get kudos, pretty much. But... To get me to a place where I think that I should be to try to achieve something in my life that I can't achieve without God. I put myself on a standard so high that it was, un it was, it was, it was so hard for me to reach that. In all actuality, I was way down here. But see, way down here is just as great as way up there. But I have to have the right perspective down here. Does that make sense? So when you're going through the valley, and when it talks about valleys, you know what's in a valley? There's life in a valley. There's no life on top of a mountain for anybody that's been in the woods. But see, up on top of the mountain is where we all want to get. But there is peace, there is joy, there is all those things up on top of the mountain. But in the valleys where life, where all the deer, the streams, the rivers, the trees are growing, all the things that are producing vegetation all those things are down in the valley what? now if there's life in the valley and your circumstances are in the valley why not why don't you want to stay in the valley <coughs> fair question right if life is in if, if life is in that why not why don't you want to stay in that because it might hurt a little it might be giving up at something that you want to hang on to. That's providing you comfort. But when you do that, see, we don't even realize the very thing that you think is providing you comfort, the King of Kings is going to fill that and produce more joy and comfort that you could ever even imagine. Amen. All he wants from you is to be obedient. When, you, when the old has passed and the new has come, it's time for, you've got to make new friends, guys. Mm -hmm. Amen. You've got to make, there's going to be, there, everything's new, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a new creation, everything is new. Pastor Dave told me many a times. What, is, what does Pastor Dave call 
Um, the wilderness. Uncharted territory. If, if everything is new in your life, do you think every step that you take as a new creation is uncharted territory? And a lot of us, we don't know how to respond to uncharted territory. So when you respond to it, even though you are not a failure if you fail. Does that make sense? Because somebody called you a failure in life and called you this and called you that, called you a, a drug addict, called you this, and called you, that's not who you are. Don't believe those lies. And still don't believe those lies. But believe this, when you're, when you're coming into something, and believe me, I've had been in uncharted territory in the last two years of my life, and, I, and to be honest, I have failed in, in a lot of ways. But see, one thing that I haven't done is I haven't stayed down. Amen. I might have been down for a minute, but I wasn't out. See, when you, when you get back up, that is what I believe is more than conquered. That's right. Amen. Amen. If you stay stuck and you stay stuck in your circumstances and you stay down, you can call yourself a failure. But if you want to get back up on your feet and you want to keep moving and pressing forward, you're not a failure no more. Hallelujah. And that's in anything, guys. That's, see, we want to think of these huge things. Man, the, man, those little things, those little things that you're, those little things, man, they'll add up. Come back and bite you. I used to, you know, there's um. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about in chapter three. It talks about a time and a season. See, when we're when I'm when I am too, when we all are reading the word of God, that the Lord was putting on my heart is the, the is these scriptures coming up. Is because we wanna we wanna look for the blessings. We, we tend to focus on the blessings. When we say the new has come, or there's a time and a season for something, it's usually because you think that you're in a lull in your life and you want to get out of it. And you want to get to a better season. I've had to ask the Lord... Many a times recently in the last few years, why do I have to have so many health problems? It's like, why do I have to go through this circumstance? <coughs> He's never really answered me on that. <coughs> but it, it came to a point not too long ago where I said, Lord, give me another one. And it's like, whoa, what did I just say? And I had to go back and I had to think, it's, an, it's a season that I'm in right now. It's not a forever thing. Amen. But in this season right now, if I can't make it out of this season and I'm asking for another one, what am I doing in this one? Am I trying to get every amount, squish everything out of this one that I can? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you're at. But I guarantee you, we all have some things. The great thing is about the Lord is we're, it's, like I said, it, we're constantly changing. What, what are we constantly trying to change into? The ultimate is, is Christ, right? Yes. That's where he's, he's molding us and shaping into the image of himself, correct? But see, in the midst of everything, in the midst of all of this, 
Because what I'm trying to get at this morning is when you're a new creation and when what he did for us and he paid the price, why are we still living as we're defeated? Hmm. And a lot of us, including myself, I can, I can fake a lot of things. But it comes to, to, a, to a point where we have to get into that quiet place and we have to be real. If you're and, 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 and if you're not real with the Lord and you're not real with yourself, you're definitely going to be real with anybody else. Yep. That's right. And when somebody says real, what does that mean? I mean, it's just honesty. Yeah. If you're not going to be honest about where you're at, especially to the Lord and to yourself, I you know I, I encourage you to. And when I go back and I look at these, like I said, over these last couple years, and I was depending on people, I was depending on doctors to try to fix me. And, and, you, and, and a lot of you know what I've been through, so it's kind of hard, you know, not to put your hands in some doctors, you know? It's a, which, you know, I pray, you know, pray every day for a miracle. But see, the miracle's already been done. Because he's defeated it. Amen. See, we have to have the right perspective. He's done everything. The cross, where he died, he's done it all for you. He's lo he loves you. He did it for you. He did it for you. Amen. He did it for you. See, then, then he died and he rose again. He came and changed. He, he came and changed the, the world. Good. If one person changed anything and was an atmosphere changer, it was Jesus Christ. Wherever he was going, he changed the atmosphere. Amen. Why not you? Why not you? I think a lot of us are still stuck. I don't want to be that person that is relying on old self. I want to be that person that strictly relies on the Lord so he can lead me and guide me and direct me into all truth and I can forget this nonsense that's been left back there and, and, and walk in the newness of life. Oh, yeah. That I can be bold and confident in every circumstance. Not just the ones that benefit me. Or that I'm going to get self-gratification out of it. Or I'm going to earn something from it. But the ones that really I have to sit there and it's going to cost me something. Amen. The season that you're in right now or the season that we're in right now, even in the world, it needs people like us. Really. Really. Even just even at the even at the drama, you know, you know, you know, Roger and I were talking about just some things, just what the what the, it's chaos out there. It's strictly bonkers. Mm -hmm. But when you walk in it, you have the power by the, but by, by the but what's inside of you, but by the power of Jesus Christ to change that atmosphere. You have the ability to, by, but not by you, but by him. But see, but it's what, it, what, for his, what he's already done. We've got to know where we're at. And who, who you are. And whose you are. Because if you're just still remaining and in, in just being there, you know, in, in, in John 15... It talks about abiding, staying, resting, dwelling, all these things in John 15. Those resting and dwelling moments are not lazy words. They're action words. 
Now, there comes a time where you need to get into his presence. I know all that. But all, those, those words are, are, are action. You, you can't just sit there. You can, you can get all the knowledge in, of the word. You can get all the knowledge in it. You can read it and read it and read it. But until you're confronted about what it, how to walk it, And if you're not read up, prayed up, and fired up, Amen. when something comes your way, how do we respond? Amen. Right. See the see the truth of the matter is, we say amen, and we say these things. But the truth is, you don't know how you're going to respond until you're confronted with it. You can say whatever you want. You can have all the... But until you're confronted with it, you don't know how you're going to respond to it why it's so truly important to be prepared. Because when you're prepared, that doesn't mean that you're going to always respond right. Because you responded wrong, doesn't mean you're out. Doesn't mean you're you're. We have to sil- sit there and live a defeated life. Just means you need to go know Jesus more. And isn't that just a truly a great thing, right? It's really a. beginning and an end is a great thing. Season of your life. You know, there's four seasons, right? Well, it depends on where you live, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, in general, see, <coughs> I know, actually, you know, I really don't know if this is ever going to be over in my life. I'm going to pray for a miracle. I'm going to pray that I can make it through it. But see, the great thing is that I had to look and I had to, even last night and in in this morning, I had to, I took an inventory of myself. And I, and I sat there and I, and I was looking and I, I, uh, I was thinking, you know, about what I've gone through and I'm still here today, breathing. Is that good enough? I'm here, I, I made it, you know, he made, he brought me through it. I made it, but am I done yet? No. So I had to sit there and I had to, to, to think about you guys. I know a lot of you. I don't know you, all of your stories. I don't It doesn't really, you know, I have compassion for you. But, you know, it's time that you're a new creation. But when I sat there and I said, man, Lord, forgive me. See, I was so concentrated on me about what I wanted to get out or I wanted to get out of this. And I'm not focusing on, you know, in this time, my father and uh, my relationship has grown. Even though that he died, my my. Our relationship, since even since I've had this, we, it brought us closer together. And then in this time, my father gave his heart to the Lord, and now he's in heaven. I don't, see, 
I look at it, and that's such a great blessing to me. Because, but then I had to think, well, if this never happened, what if, what if that, you know? Or the influence I could be to other people, knowing that, even knowing that you're going through a circumstance, does, does it give you hope? I don't know who I've influenced. I hope I influence some people. But I don't know all that. I really don't care. I mean, I care that you they influence you, but I don't care to that it's known to me. But it's like those things, and I had to get out of myself and focus on other people. And that's when he, like, he, he was like, I didn't do it, but I was like, now, he's like, now you're getting somewhere. Because it's not about me. Maybe it's not about me going through that. It's about maybe influencing somebody else to give them a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if I have to stay stuck in it, I'm stuck in it. So be it. Even through all of our life changes, Jesus remains the same. That's what I love. Even through all the changes in our life, even through all the stuff, even everything, one thing that we can depend on is he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. A lot of people have let, her, let, us, let us down in life. I know that. A lot of people have offended us. A lot of... See, Jesus never has done that. Jesus has always been there through it all. The only constant thing, that's what I put right here, the, the only constant thing is Jesus Christ. Change, change is going to come. Imagine, you know, I just look at at the disciples and the, you know, when they, when they're in their upper, in the upper room, now that would be an experience. There's some things that, you know, we do in the drama and we look at it and then, uh, do we really understand the magnitude? When you look at the, even when, you know, Jesus is carrying the cross, how powerful that is. When he's making his way, and he sat there, and he bled, and he died, and rose again for us. And they say that his face was unrecognizable. His body was, cr his ribs, his body was, you know, just everything, everything he's been beaten. Beard pulled out. Spat on. And the blood that was shed. And we look, I'll just say me, and we look, and what are we really complaining about? What am I really complaining about? I know, uh, a lot of us have, uh, when I say, you know, we got to let go of the past, and, and I'm not saying, guys, that, you know, that it, that it's going to be the, the easiest thing in the world, or, because a lot of us have, you know, a lot of us have children, and just want to let you know that it's possible. Mm. You know? Right. And you know, the, one of the greatest things about the Lord is the things that you know, I'm not, and, and, and I'm not saying that it, it always works out that this way or not, but <clears throat> when you lay something down, a lot of times it's, it's 
blessed right back to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it always works that way, guys. Because it because it it just it just it just doesn't. I would be standing up here and if it if I, I'm not going to stand up here and lie to you or fill you full of something that's not going to be true. And I can say it into my own life. That's how I know. You know, I, I do have a daughter, and I haven't seen her in almost 10 years. I've been walking with the Lord for almost 10 years. And so I had to lay that down. I'm not saying, that's what I'm saying, guys. It's just, do I not pray for it? or is it, if it ha But what if it never happens? What if I never get to see her again? Am I still going to follow the Lord? Absolutely. I'm not. I'm looking at, and I, I don't know why I'm just going back there to Charles for some reason. I'm just my eyes are like fixed on, him because he's there with his son. That's what. Uh, and I and I look at, at Jenny, and I'm just see his family back there. See what God can do. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't know his son. I don't have it. I'm, I mean, I met him, but I'm, I don't know him. But I guarantee you, he can look at his dad and say he's probably never pr been prouder than his dad. Proud that his dad is because what he's doing or what the Lord's doing in his dad. Because I guarantee you, I, I don't know Charles. I just know, I, I mean, I, I know, and I don't, I, we didn't coerce this before we came up here. But I did see him, and when he first came in, so we had kind of a little bond right when he came in. I mean, but. Because I was down, because I was out, and he was parked next to me right when he came in. It was the drama, I believe. But see, restoration. He restored that relationship. Did he? He restored that relationship. Adam's family restored that relationship. Amen. Is it's it. it that's what he does. But I'm not saying that that's what he does to, for everybody. I'm, I'm just, I just can't say that. I hope and I pray in Jesus' name that he, that, he, that he does that for you. I just love it. I, I don't know why I, I, I interrupted everything just to focus on Charles. But I, I'm just, because it was, it's so amazing of what Jesus can do. That's what I'm saying. I'm not just saying about restoration. I'm, I'm talking about giving you a new lease on life. Amen. You know, the only, you know, people, some people have asked me, well, why did you go into the men, well, why'd you, after the men's discipleship, why'd you stay back? Fair question. Why did I stay and be a, a staff member? Well, the main reason is why is because Jesus gave me a new lease on life, and I want to give back for what He graciously so given me. That's the only reason why I stayed back there. You know, I mean, changed lives are amazing. I wouldn't. I'm, I mean, before you could, you know, give me amount of money, I could trade it in for that. But to see a changed life by the power of Jesus Christ, there's nothing better. When you can sit there. And you can watch somebody that is down and out, strung out on drugs, or whatever, strung out on life, whatever the case may be, and you see them and you walk in in three or four days, you see light in someone's eyes and have a and have hope. Oh, man. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, it wasn't always that way. I could care less about that before I knew before Jesus came and saved me. I could care less. Right. I what I mean, I was nothing. Well, because I didn't love myself. But so when he gave me that, that new lease on life and he saved me, he's what he's done for you, and he set you apart that you can walk now. Amen. Yes, we might have trials, we might have tests, we all have it, but who cares? Who really cares? You have a new lease on life. You have breath. You have the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you that's going to lead you and guide you and direct you into all truth. 
He's going to strengthen you to do things that you won't even, you can't even imagine that you could do or that you could make it through. But then you look back and say, wow, how did I make it through that? You didn't do a spill of beans. That's what you did. You walked, but he, he's the one that strengthened you. I guarantee you that if I, if I had to go through what two years ago and I wasn't, man, I would have ran. If I knew, if I knew back then that I was going to have to go through this today, I just hope and pray that I wouldn't have ran, but I guarantee you that I probably would have. Yeah. Yeah. And the great thing about the Lord is his, he prepared me for years for this time. I don't know, but it's a time and a season that I have to go through. There's a time and a season right now, and like in Ecclesiastes 3, that you have to go through this time and a season. It's not all bad. Just get everything out of it. But I don't know what everything, I don't even, you might not be in a bad spot. That's great. I'm not saying that every season's bad. There's good seasons. There's difficult seasons. There's all types of seasons. There's se- you just read it. There's seasons about everything. But until you can have joy in the midst of your circumstances and, and respond to your circumstances like a godly man or woman, because I truly believe one of the signs that you haven't, your character is how you respond to those. Because if you, can, if you can maintain through the midst of a trial in the valley, you can maintain a lot. But see, with when, you try to, when you try to get out of it, like I, told, like I said in the beginning, when you, when you try to get out of that hole, see, for many, many years we were all trying to get out of something. Man, if I could just make it on the top of this, or man, if I just had this much money, man, if I had this. Yeah, right. Right. But now, if you have the right perspective, and you want to sit, and you can stay in the valley, and you can just get bam, 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 like you've been hit by Tyson and hadn't thrown a lick, but you, you can just sit there, and you can and, and maintain, and still have that purpose, Man, you're going somewhere. Amen. There's, a, there's only one that can help you. Amen. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Because what happens is, and I know Pastor Jeff, Pastor Myrna, Pastor Vince, Pastor Dave, Pastor Alice would all say this. You, you, you can't depend on them all the time. They're merely just men and women. They will let you down. At some point, they'll let you down. But God, is, He will never let you down. He will never let you down. Now, that, now that, that to say that I've had the pastors ever let me down? No. But I'm saying is that they're just merely men and women. And in this last little bit right here, the word. Don't compromise it, guys. Amen. Don't get this out of your life. There's a lot of guys and women in the back here that. Pastor Dave would always tell me when I would go and have to sit down and have the counseling sessions with the pastor many and many a time. Many and many and many a time. We're always looking for the end. We're always looking. But we forget about the journey. And the preparation that is along the journey. You're getting prepared right now for some things I don't know. I don't know. But God is preparing you right now for a great thing. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it is. But he's he's preparing you. I don't know to be a better dad. To to be a better 
mom. To do whatever that he's called you to do. I don't know what that is. But I do know it's good. Because if, if you stay connected to the vine and you dwell and you rest in his presence always that it's going to be good. But see, when we have to say that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind and we're, and we're getting transformed, sometimes that transformation hurts. Sometimes that transformation might take a little bit. So during that season, I don't want to see, if you're in that season, I don't want you to give up on that. There's no more quitters in this room. Because on this short little journey that I've had with the Lord, usually your blessing is just right around the corner. Amen. But see, a lot of times we don't make it. Amen. We give up. Yeah. What, you know what one of the greatest blessings that I found? <clears throat> the one thing that I, that I always wanted, even though through all the the years and running and gunning. You know what one thing that I have now that I wouldn't trade it in? You know what that is? Jesus, yes. But you know, do you know what the one thing is peace. Well, you know how you know how comforting it is to have peace? But see, if you if you don't if you don't have that see that that's Honesty, and that's that, that that's great. You're in a great place to find out. See, that's it, and and you're and and when you and when you do that, it's just a, it's amazing when you can wake up in the morning and have peace. That's right. Amen. But see, even in the even in the even in the programs, you might not think that you have it or anything, but you're waking up in a comfortable bed, and you got, you know people that genuinely take an interest in your life and love you so let's just be let's always remain grateful and thankful Amen. so um, just remember to I'm not going to sing I promise you that uh, but um, uh, I don't know why this just came to me and it says you know give thanks with a grateful heart yeah. <clears throat> To, to be thankful and grateful. Not for what I've done, not for what pastor <coughs> have done in your life, not for that, but be grateful and thankful for what Jesus died and bled for. Hallelujah. And then rose again. He came back because he loved, he, he, he loved you. You know that? Yeah. You know you have a plan and a great purpose in your life? I'm trying, to out trying to find out? I, I can guarantee it's true. There's one, you know, there's many a thing. Don't give up. Don't give up. Jesus isn't giving up on you. Don't give up on him. Come to that point where if, you, if you're there, even if, it, and, you know, in the back, guys that aren't in the, you know, people that aren't in the program, if you, you know, remember he's the anchor. Hold on. Ways might get choppy. Hang on. He's got you grounded. Lord God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the, the opportunity, the privilege and honor to be called children of God. We thank you and we honor you and we praise you for what you're doing in all of our lives. We thank you that you're leading us and guiding us and directing us. Lord, we just, we ask that you uh, take full control. Lead us and guide us and direct us in all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.